प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर स्वामी पे रहो अमारिए नजर स्वामी पे रहो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Nare. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge all of you that on Puja Guruji's birthday, July 26th, which just went by, there was a book published by the name of Kalyan Kanika. It's in the language of Gujarati, but for those who can read or those who have parents that can read it to them, it's highly suggested that you start to listen to these talks. These talks are pretty much Puja Guruji's katha preachings that he has done in the past and the most essence have been recollected and put into a book. So regarding that, today I wanted to read a small talk, but that's not our subject, but it will foreshadow our subject for today. Swami Narayan Hare, Bhujya Guruji says, I'm just going to translate, if Muktanan Swami was not ever or did not ever come on this earth, then we would have never met Maharaj. Sarvopari Bhagwan Swami Narayan, we have met him and the credit goes to Sadhguru Muktanan Swami. As all of you know, in our previous lectures, we have talked about Muktanan Swami and how he is, his greatness. But today, we really want to see his true level, his true spiritual level. Because there have been many, many saints in the Swamirayan sect. Bhagwan Swamirayan himself initiated 2,000 saints. And from those 2,000 saints, there were 500 elite santos called non-santo. And from those elite santo, there was one, you can say, perfect sadhu. And his name was Muktanan Swami. He was a sample, you can say, a role model for others. But in this talk, Bhujya Guruji says that if we had not met Muktanan Swami, then we would not have met Maharaj himself. This is Kanika 5, talk number 19. Now, such is a talk that Bhagwan himself can manifest on earth any time he likes and meet others. But Muktan Swami played such a crucial role that due to his role, we have attained Bhagwan, we have or we are understanding Bhagwan. And right now, due to his, you can say, leadership, due to his dedication, his surrendership, we are experiencing Bhagwan's bliss. So due to that, Guruji is saying that all credit goes to him. Now our talk for today. It's a charitra on, in Sadguru Muktan Swami's life and how his greatness is measured. So we also published a book in Yudh Sibir 2017 uh, on July 8th called Sadguru Muktanan Swami, A Spiritual Odyssey Through His Remarkable Life. It's all in English. It's all in English, and uh, you can get it from uh, Loyada Mandir, New Jersey, Loyada Mandir, Meccan, and also in India, so Swamiram Guru Kandari and all the other branches. So whoever wants 
upload a copy of this, please do email us at loedamnj at gmail.com, your address and uh, the number of copies, and you'll be sent this book. It's the first publication regarding Muqtan Swami's whole life in the language of English. It, the author of the book is uh, our Parsad Sri Rushi Bhagat, a disciple of our Puja Guruji. He wrote this book, and then it was designed and published by Sri Swamran Mandir Loya Dam, New Jersey. So, there's a story, a prasang in Sadhguru Muktan Swami's life that we want to read and analyze today. So this is the preface, you can say, of the story before the story is starting. The author states, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. These were some of the last words of Jesus when he was nailed to the cross by the soldiers. A similar incident in the life of Muktan and Swami occurred. His relentless persistence in the face of many obstacles proves that absolute dedication to the Lord will lead to the ultimate spiritual experience. Now, Muktan and Swami, before this, Jesus, who was believed to be the Son of God in Christianity, he was crucified and tortured very brutally by soldiers due to an incident which was not real but was pertained to him, that he was the one that was found guilty. And due to that, he suffered, but no one forgot Jesus. In the same exact manner, 230 years ago, Muktan Swami also tolerated many, many people's insults. But today we remember him. Today there are books that are written about him. Today, off of his life, off of his divine incidences, off of his numerous stories, other santos, other saints and devotees get more spiritual strength to live such a life. So he is not forgotten. But Getting into the story now, the fame and glory of Lord Swaminarayan inspired the governor of Gujarat to build a temple in Ahmedabad. The governor offered the land. Meanwhile, under the care of the devotees, a residence for saints was prepared. Finally, the chief devotee, Nanabai, told Jayan and Verni to travel to Gadara, bring Muktan Swami and have him stay at the new residence for preaching to devotees throughout the months of the monsoon season. So Bhagwan Swaminarayan at that time was building six grand temples. And in that order, the temple of Amda was, was being built. And next to it, there was a, um, a residence for sadhus to live that was being built. And over there, Nanabai, a devotee, told Jayanand Verni, another, you can say, saint of Maharaj, that please go ahead and call Muktan Swami so he can preach about the glory of God so due to that, many, many devotees would, many, many people would come and become devotees and start to attend the temple. As per request, Jana and Verni arrived at Gadara and explained the matter to, at hand. Sri Hari was pleased and ordered Muktan Swami to travel to Amdalad with a few saints and at once Swami prepared to leave. So after Swami, after, her, after Maharaj heard this, he immediately sent Swami to listen or to preach about Bhagwan, And it is stated in the Vachnamud, Gada middle chapter, 58th, that having said this, Sri Jimaraj then commanded Muktanan Swami, you too should continuously preach and write scriptures related to your Sampradai and your Istadev, meaning your God, for the rest of your life. This is my only command to you for as long as you live. So Bhagwan himself has commanded Muktanan Swami in the Vachramrut to preach about Bhagwan and to write scriptures. So that's why in this, you can say, paragraph, when Maharaj commanded Swami, he immediately went off. After arrival, the saints resided at the new residence and Muktanan Swami started his daily talks. When people heard of his arrival, now pay attention, when people heard of his arrival, they would come to listen and offer various gifts. Swami's fame increased and, and the good people were inspired. And on the other side, the opposers, evil, burned in envy. 
meaning and jealousy. Because Swami was starting to get fame. Swami was starting to become famous that, oh, all these people are becoming attracted to him. And due to that, those who did not like the Swaminarayan Sampraday or the Swaminarayan sect, they started to oppose Swami. They started, they started to become jealous of Swami. Now, it's natural in this world that anyone who becomes higher in the world becomes more hated by opposers. You can say, we can even look at some people in history. Abraham Lincoln. Look at how many tasks he did. He abolished slavery. He made many, many amendments. He did great tasks. Due to that, what happened? He got assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. Another president, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy was a great president who inspired many, many people. But what happened? He also got assassinated. The more higher you go in this world, the more people are going to try to pull you down. And that's when, that's when one's greatness is really measured. Whether you become pulled down or whether you pursue or view those people who are trying to pull you down, but you do not have any hatred in your heart. You just watch them, but you keep going on your path to attain Bhagwan. Let's see what Muktanan Swami does. There were those who decided to kill Muktanan Swami. They decided to kill him over what? Over him preaching. Whose command was it? Bhagwan Swamiran's command. As I read to you in Garuda middle chapter, Bhagwan said that I command you to go ahead and Preach and go ahead and write scriptures. It's Bhagwan's command, a saint. By what kind of characteristics? He has no connection with money. In the Swamiran Sampraday, in this religion, these clothes that you wear are of sadhus, saints. The white clothes are training to become a sadhu. Now, when you receive initiation, there are two rules that you receive that are main for a sadhu. Number one, no kind of connection with women, meaning viewing them, talking to them, touching them, nothing, zero. And number two, no connection with money. No credit cards, no checks, no bank balances, nothing. These are the two primary rules of Swaminarayan Sadhu. Now, in this world, how many people follow this kind of rules? The whole world runs off of these two things, if you think about it. But, Muktanan Swami, who followed these rules to such a high pinnacle, such a high point, he too, he himself was, you can say, someone wanted to kill him. Such a Sadhu. Now, what, did, what has he done wrong? Let's see. They declared only Muktanan Swami is the root of the growth of the Swamiran sect. And when the root is cut, the branches and leaves automatically dry up and die. It makes sense, right? If you cut a root of the tree or if you put acid in the tree, the roots of it, automatically, no matter how high a tree is, 100 foot, 200 foot tree, it's going to one day dry up and die. So this is what they decided. They thought that the very reason that the Swamiran sect at that point, 200 years ago, is increasing and increasing is due to Muktan and Swami. And let me tell you a fact. It is due to his effort that it was increasing and right now it is increasing. But how can you kill a sadhu who has Bhagwan inside of him? How can you kill a sadhu that has Bhagwan on his side. In this world, I want you to think of a scenario. On one side, there is Muktanan Swami. And on the other side, the whole world, 7 billion people, is against Muktanan Swami and is ready to kill him. Now, Muktanan Swami has Bhagwan on his side. And on the other side, there is 7 billion people. Who will win? Two against 7 billion. Who will win? 
those who are familiar with the religion may say, yes, Muktan, Swami, and Bhagwan. And those who don't know say that 7 billion people, even 50 people can take down Muktan and Swami. But Bhagwan himself is the all-doer. We forget. If Bhagwan is on Muktan and Swami's side, no matter what, if Bhagwan wishes, he will win, he will win, and he, he will win. Let's see what happens. On one occasion, Muktan and Swami was speaking in the assembly of the glory about the glory of God. Everyone was praising Muktan and Swami and was satisfied by his eloquent speech. One evil-minded person disguised as a devotee mixed deadly poison powder with sandalwood paste. Before the discourse, discourses began, he stood up and bowed down to Muktan and Swami and applied sandalwood paste on Muktan and Swami's forehead. The poison was so intense that the hands of the person who, was, who had applied the pa paste burned intensely. And before reaching home, he became unconscious. Now, these evil-minded people obviously had a plan. So, before any discourse take, takes place in those times, what they do is they do the ritual of the person who is giving the discourse in a form of a respect. So an evil-minded person who is an opposer, he decided to dress up as a devotee. He decided to go to Muktan and Swami. And sandaled wood paste is a very, very high form of uh, ritual worship. So what he did was he took the paste, he made it, and he put very, very poisonous powder inside the paste and mixed it. Now, he applied it to Swami's forehead. Imagine such kind of an acid, such kind of, a, a, you can say, a venom. If applied to the skin, what would happen? The person's hand started to burn. That's how intense the poison was. And he applied it on Muktan Swami so that Muktan Swami would die. Or be killed. Only by the grace of Sri Hari could Muktan Swami survive. That was the, you can say, that was the limit of how the in, how intense the poison was. After a few minutes, Swami's eyes were were seized by the influence of the poison, meaning his eyes started to burn. He could not open his eyes because the, I mean, even right now, if we think about it. If we become sick and we put Vicks, right? If we apply Vicks on our forehead, we start to become like this, right? Our eyes become very small because it burns so much. It's attacking the, the cold inside of you. Compared to Vicks, this venom, how deadly can it be? And Swami's eyes started to have an effect on it. After a few minutes, Swami's eyes were seized. His forehead burned with unbearable pain. And he could not open his eyes. When the saints and devotees observed this, they drew near to see what had happened. Muktan and Swami fell on the ground unconscious. So he was sitting like this, and after some time, due to the intensity of the poison, he fell unconscious. No one could realize the reason of such a sudden assault. Devotees brought him from the cot and called it for help. A physician, meaning a doctor, checked Swami's pulse and said, deadly poison has penetrated inside the bloodstream of Puja Swami. While removing the sandalwood paste from Swami's forehead, a layer of skin also peeled off due to the poison. Now a doctor came and examined his pulse and he said that there's deadly poison that has penetrated or has went inside the bloodstream of Swami. And also, when Santo started to clean off the sandalwood, the skin also started to peel off of Swami's forehead. That's how intense the poison was. While removing the sandalwood paste, the skin fell off. The physician asserted that someone had mixed poison with the sandalwood paste. After some research, they came to know that one wicked man had in, indeed done this and had ran away. Muktan Swami stayed, Muktan Swami stayed worsened. His body expressions changed. The physician carefully observed and said, Swami cannot live much longer, meaning he, could, he would not be able to survive. On hearing this, everyone started to wail, meaning cry. Within moments, Muktan Swami's body became green. 
the physician declared, I have no medicine to cure Swamiji. It is an extremely deadly poison that may take one's life simply through contact. Swamiji's survival depends all upon the grace of God. In this tragic condition, the chief sadhu sent a report to Sri Hari. The saints started to prepare immediately to take Swami to Jetalpur on a cart. A messenger reached Gadada and handed over the letter to Sri Hari in which it had ri written, O oh God, an evil man had applied poisonous sandalwood paste on Muktan Swami's forehead. As a result, the poison pervaded the body and, and the physician cannot cure him. Muktan Swami is unconscious. Katha is stopped. We will bring him to Jetalpur. So Maharaj was informed of Swami's whole situation. Sriji Maharaj was residing in Jetalpur at that time, a village nearby. So Swami is carted to the village so he can be in the presence of Maharaj. After reading the letter, Sri Hari looked down and gave the letter to Gopan Swami. Tears welled from his eyes. Gopan Swami read the letter. He also began to lament. Sri Hari said, Muktanand Swami does not consider anyone his enemy and only thinks for the benefit of others. Yet, the person who has done this to him is not pardoned. Muktan Swami Maharaj says himself, only thinks, he was never thinks of anyone as his enemy. He only thinks of his benefit. This is the very point that we want to learn from this story. The story will continue. We will see what happens. But not to consider anyone your enemy. Even if they do such kind of a stunt and to always believe him or always think of his benefit. This is the greatest characteristic of a sadhu. Meaning your greatness can only be measured off of such kind of an adverse circumstance. Now, in the Vachanamrut, Bhagwan states again in Garada, 1st chapter 27, Consequently, by the grace of God, that devotee attains countless types of powers and liberates countless beings. Despite these powers, though he tolerates the praises and insults of other people, this itself is a great feat. Because to tolerate despite being so powerful, is not easy for others to achieve. Therefore, only one who tolerates in this manner should be considered to be extremely great. Gadada, 1st chapter, 27th Vachnamrut. Bhagwan himself says in his Vachnamrut that extreme greatness is only when... Let me give you an example. Suppose you are a beggar and one day the king comes, the king of the kingdom comes and says, come now and sit with me on my throne. You are also the king of this kingdom. Now you, you become so surprised. You say, sure, why not? You get to live in the kingdom. You get to have as much as power as the king does. You get to do whatever you want. So you come and sit on the throne next to the king. And you rule the kingdom for 50, 60, 70 years until you become very old. One day, the other king that is still with you, he says, now, go and become a beggar. You are not the king anymore. It was a temporary job. I, I thank you for sitting next to me and ruling this kingdom and helping me out. Now, go ahead and sit. Go ahead and become a beggar. Do you honestly think after 60, 70 years of ruling, after tasting that power, after tasting how you, have, you can command thousands and thousands of people what to do, that you can go ahead and become a beggar? Is it easy to do? No, because you know how a beggar's life is. Due to that, when after tasting the power of a king, you can't go back to that. But in this situation, off of my example, such kind of a sadhu, Muktan Swami is at such a high level, you can say a king's level, yet 
he becomes like a beggar and he folds his hands even towards the most you can say people who don't even have value people who don't even follow any rules people who don't have any moral fiber that's the true greatness of a sadhu and in this vachamrit gadara first chapter 27 bhagwan states it in that fashion in this story bhagwan states that muktan swami does not consider anyone as enemy and only thinks of the benefit of others this is what we have to learn in our life as you students or whoever is listening you go through school high school college and you have many many people friends and you have other people who want or who insult you who do not like you who thinks that you are the worst person on this world but not to think of them as bad people but to think of their benefit that's your true you can say lesson as a satsangi that's how much credit in the eyes of Bhagwan that you get after entering the mandir it's not all about doing the tilak chanlo or only having a ganti or coming to mandir weekly or doing all these things following rules it's not it doesn't end there yes we do have to do that but on a more deeper basis if we analyze our life on a more deeper scale if we start to attain qualities like this that bhagwan likes then bhagwan will become happy upon us and when bhagwan becomes happy on us then we also experience his bliss and we become happy our ultimate goal is to become happy yes whether we live in the world and we buy the most expensive cars and live in the biggest homes what is that for to become happy or whether we get rid of everything and go off into the forest or go off and become a sadhu and let go of money and wealth and women and everything we want to become happy both ends we want to become happy it's a matter of what end you choose and how you live your life that's the main factor let's see what happens further in this story all the saints and devotees were shocked upon hearing the devastating tragic news their hearts collapsed female devotees shed tears dada kachar held the feet of shri hari and said while weeping maharaj please save muktanand swami after he is no longer to stay with us give him the rest of my life span mukta or uh, dada kachar saving dada kachar saving give him my life span so muktanand swami can stay on this earth Muktan Swami is the mother of our satsang fellowship and without a mother no matter how much happiness there is in the world it still feels empty for a child remorsefully pleading dada kachar said maharaj please save him shri hari wept and wiped the tears of dada kachar and told baguji an attendant to bring manki meaning bhagwan's horse Shri Hari departed for Jetalpur. Manki realized the intention of Shri Hari and with twinkling eyes Manki passed long distances with its majestic strides. Before sunset Shri Hari arrived at Jetalpur. Saints and devotees were chanting the name of God while sitting around Muktanand Swami. At once Shri Hari dismounted and asked the saints what had happened. The tears from their eyes revealed the tragic incident. as shri hari saw muktan swami unconscious he moved towards him seeing his body the tears fell from shri hari's eyes even bhagwan himself started to cry after seeing such such a immoral act done by opposers bhagwan himself came on its earth and he also had to experience pain because this world is like this no matter what you have to experience pain that's the only way you can experience happiness true happiness or else people who live in their life eat drink buy very expensive things and live in big homes they don't feel pain they don't feel that they're miserable they think that they're happy but in reality before they leave this body they'll experience pain because they know that they will they will not take anything with them just like how napoleon ruled 70% of the world in 
one time on this earth. Yet he had to say, or I think it was Alexander the Great. Yeah, Alexander the Great. He had to say before on his deathbed, around when doctors were all surrounding him, that I have gotten everything, but I am taking nothing with me. He had to comment. He had to say this. He had to inform others. Even at such a tender age of 37 or 38, when he departed his body, he told the physicians, the doctors, the best doctors around the world he had called to try to fix his illness. He told them that I am taking nothing with me. In the same manner, here, we may live great lives, but we are taking nothing with us. Only Bhagwan comes with us. Only the Ekantik Satpurush, only his sadhus and devotees will come with us. But it's a matter of what road we choose. That's the main point. By the soft touch of Sri Hari's hand and on hearing sympathetic voice, Muktan Swami regained consciousness. He opened his eyes. He saw the devotees and saints along with Sri Hari. Sri Hari raised his hands and then embraced and put his hand, head on Muktan Swami's shoulder. Sri Hari said, Swami, they are not exempt from dire consequences. Those who have done such an unkind act to you, it would not be better to give any pardon. Meaning, Maharaj is saying, don't forgive them. They have done this to you and I won't forgive them. Maharaj is saying, God himself is saying this. Let's see what Muktanan Swami says. Muktanan Swami realized that a wicked person had applied poisonous sandal, sandalwood paste on his forehead. He wiped the tears of Sri Hari and said, O oh Lord, please be kind to them. Do not act cruelly to them. Then Sri Hari said, Swami, for your protection, I do not have mercy on such a person who has hurt my utmost elite son. My Lord, how is it proper to take out your mercy for all, only for evilness of one of such a person, of one person? You are the ocean of kindness, and only because of the of that kindness you are in, you have incarnated on this earth to liberate countless souls. And without your grace, salvation is not possible. O oh Lord, I apologize for you traveling all the way here. For my grief. Muktan Swami, please forgive him for applying poisonous sandalwood paste on me. Muktan Swami pleaded. Now this is true greatness. Swami himself is preaching to Bhagwan himself. Bhagwan made or initiated 2,000 saints 200 years ago. Out of them, 500 were main, as I stated. But out of all those 2,000 saints, there was only one sadhu that became, you can say, the disciple of God and also became the guru of God. And that was Muktanan Swami himself. Muktanan Swami became both roles. He played both roles. He became the guru and he became the disciple of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And in this, you can say, context, in this story right now, he is preaching to Bhagwan to forgive the person. Such kind of a sadhu, such kind of qualities of a saint, no one can possess. And Bhagwan himself stated that only those who are great can possess such kind of qualities. Not only that, but he also apologized to Bhagwan for having traveled Bhagwan from all the way from where he was, Gadada, to Jetalpur. He said, please forgive me for bringing you grief that you had to come all the way here. Such kind of a vivek, you can say discrimination, a right sense. Such a sadhu only, you can say, became very dear to Bhagwan, And right now we remember him. Hearing such words of Muktan Swami, Sri Hari said, Swami, your kindness is no greater has no greater platform than I imagined. In fact, your understanding is worth the greatest praise. 
the impact of the poison remained for a long time due to which Swami or due to staying in the sun uproared great pain in Swami. So the the pain remained. So whenever Swami went in the sun, it burned his forehead because of the poison. Obviously, Bhagwan himself, through his divine touch, cured the poison. So Swami lived and everything was okay. But there were some remedies of pain on his forehead due to the intensity of the poison. Therefore, Sri Hari had ordered him to wear a topi, a cap, covering his forehead on his head. You may see pictures of photos of Muktan Swami. He is right above here. And he is he is the only sadhu wearing a, a kind of like a cap covering his ears and his forehead. And this is the very prasang. This is the very charitra. That's the reason why Bhagwan Swami commanded him to wear this so that he is not burned by the sun or the intense heat. Muktan Swami once and I'll take a look. It's small charitra right after. Muktan Swami once traveled through Sundariana village with a group of saints. On the outskirts of the village, four people were seated under a tree. Among them, one said, It seems that this old sadhu who has worn a topi does not belong to the Swaminarayan sect. On hearing this, Muktan Swami threw his topi away. He threw his hat away. Therefore, what was the reason? Because one of the persons said that he does not belong to the Swaminarayan sect, the religion. Thereafter, Muktan Swami arrived in Gadara after traveling through numerous villages. Sri Hari greeted all the saints but Muktan Swami. Muktan Swami said, Maharaj, the king should know first the crime before punishment. Maharaj, what is my fault that you have not greeted me? Sri Hari said, I have asked you to wear a topi, a cap. Swami, you have broken my command. You have transgressed my order. Then Muktan Swami said, Maharaj, now you have to listen. Maharaj, I would bear all the pain in the world, but I cannot tolerate someone saying that I do not belong to Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This is the type of faith he had. That if someone saw him and he said he does not belong to Swaminarayan, he took off the hat so he would be, so he would be recognized that I do belong to Bhagavan Swaminarayan. As Muktan Swami spoke these words, Sri Hari got up and embraced him, hugged him. He said, "Swami, your understanding and love for me is excellent and unparalleled." This is the charitra of Sadguru Muktanand Swami. Just one small prasang, a very small prasang, in his life and how he was truly great and how he was great to Bhagwan Swami and how he was dear to Bhagwan Swami and all his santos and bhaktos and how we remember him today. So we should learn such kind of a life lesson that no matter how much people try to you know, insult us, no matter how much anyone has hatred towards us, we should always think of their benefit and that's a true characteristic of a sadhu and that's how Maharaj, Puja Guruji, and Santos and Bhaktos will become pleased. Saying this, Sadguru Muktan Swami's book is you can obtain from um, our mandir here. You can email us at loyadamnj at gmail.com. Nonetheless, the same goes for Kalyankanika, Puja Guruji's book. It's in Gujarati. It can also be obtained at the same address. Just put your name and email how many copies, and you will get a response. Saying this, my humble. Jai Swami Narayan.